Let's chat real quick about this comic book store slash coffee shop series I found on Kindle Unlimited because it is interesting. This is Marvel's Mochas and Murder by a married duo writing as Christine Zane Thomas. It's really a uh, like this perfect yin yang thing of stuff I actually enjoyed that kept me engaged in the book and things that I thought were so odd that it also compelled me to keep reading. <laughs> so the, the premise here is that the main character, Kirby, and his closest friend, Ryan, have opened up a coffee shop slash comic book store called Kapow Coffee together. Kirby's the coffee specialist with the business degree and Ryan is the nerd who was able to make the loan for the business possible, you know. Now, I was drawn to the series because of the comic book connection. Uh, especially since I've found Legends and Lattes, I've been sort of seeking out cozies with a connection to other stuff I'm into that aren't really found in a lot of the extant cozy catalog, you know? So I think the biggest issue with this book is that the, the protagonist doesn't actually like any of that stuff. <laughs> At least not in the beginning. Um, I would say spoiler alert, but I think this is fair game since it, it tells you in the blurb for the book Ryan gets murdered pretty early on, so, like, you drew me in with this premise of getting to geek out a little bit, but Kirby spends a lot of the story, like, grumbling about the comic side of the shop, like, digging at Ryan for playing Dungeons and Dragons, which, I mean, like, do you not know who the only people probably clicking on this book to read it are? I just, I don't really understand this choice. But you know, all is not lost, uh, because so few cozies take this angle that I found myself still really enjoying, like, uh, when Ryan got one of their employees really into the Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel series. I'm guessing this book probably came out around 2016, when I had just gotten into those myself. 2015, maybe. And Kirby does kind of start opening his mind to a lot of this stuff that he says he enjoyed when he was younger by the end of the book. But, you know, it was just still... It was pretty jarring to put up with it for so much of the story because it's the whole reason I clicked on it in the first place. Like, I didn't think I'd be getting insulted. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> and, um, so you've probably noted by now that the MC in this book is a man which is very atypical for amateur sleuth stories. You see it some in these books with private investigators or detectives, but, like, not the amateur sleuth ones. Uh, especially when he ticks every box for a cozy main character like this. So, like, watch out. Uh, the author did a subversion. This role is just straight-up gender-flipped. Like, he has just returned to this tiny hometown of his, after getting cheated on by his fiance, uh, he opens up a coffee shop, and by the end of the book, he has a cop and a healthcare worker fighting over him. So I just, you know, this is very Harold Swenson. <laughs> and so I, I haven't seen that before, and I thought that was worth noting. I, I have seen books with male protagonists in the cozy genre, but not literally just the inversion of the female amateur sleuth like this. But uh, moving on, the most unhinged thing about this book to me is probably that a solid 5% of it is just, just talking about CrossFit. <laughs> Not in a even remotely entertaining way, just like he goes to CrossFit with his girlfriend, but not girlfriend. And he tells you about how the gym is called a box and all the workouts that they did. And I don't think a single person in the entire world asked for that. <laughs> so I'm just assuming that the authors were going to those together when they wrote this. And they, they felt that compulsion like to evangelize. I'm going to read you the examples of it real quick. Okay, so like she's... She, his high school crush, who's now this cop... She's told him about CrossFit and how she's going literally every weekday. So here's a passage from the first time they go together. It's, they lifted more weight. Felicia exactly twice as much weight as me. 
I had never seen cardio combined with weightlifting before. I thought they were two separate events. First you lift, then you walk on a treadmill or something. Well, not at CrossFit. <laughs> oh man, and it's just, let's see. The box, what the members called the gym, was just that, a box. Rob used one of his larger storage units to store the equipment and host the class. Yet. So they're doing all this in a storage unit, which is just that much weirder. <laughs> I have to skip several chapters ahead because they go back before the end of the book. I arrived at the storage unit in the nick of time, or what I thought was the nick of time. If you're on time, you're late. Rob sounded just like an Air Force drill instructor. Looking at him, I guess he'd probably served as well. Army or Marines. He marked a star beside my name on the whiteboard. I had no clue what that meant, so I started the warm-up. I- okay. That is kindergarten teacher behavior. I- <sighs> I wish someone would get me to voluntarily go just like get nagged at and also exercise. Skip ahead a little bit. This is all narration of their workout in between this. At the end of it, I was winded. Sweat pooled on my chest. I lay a heap on the floor making a sweat angel. Alright, sweat angel was actually kind of good. I'll give him that. Felicia hovered over me. She took a swig of bottled water and said, you know you're not finished, right? the subtext. <laughs> oh no, I'm definitely finished. She smiled mischievously, then pointed at the star beside my name. You were late. I can't. I can't. Okay. So yeah, the, the, there's more CrossFit, and I just... Anyway, moving on. Man, CrossFit. Another 5% is references to the show Castle, which I'm a little sad I could never appreciate since I never actually watched it. But I might check that out now, because I, I remember I was into Firefly in the mid-teens, and Castle got talked up a good bit on Tumblr, too. You know, Nathan Fillion, we stand. But let's see, um, this is a nitpick. But there's a joke about Ryan having dated a girl named Gertrude in high school, and that just, like, that's some iCarly humor. Like, it's funny, because her name makes her sound ugly. Get it? Like, th it's stupid. I, I can't stand jokes like that. Let's see, uh, there's also the trope where the murderer just, like, catches a vibe. Like an airwave letting them know that the protagonist has figured them out. And because of this, they decide to confront them. Which, it's certainly not a unique sin in this genre. That happens a lot. But it just always makes me kind of throw my hands up in the air. Because it never makes sense. Like, they just, they vibe check and all of a sudden they've got a gun in the protagonist's face. I don't know. But, uh, I've been ragging on this book. But uh, I actually gave it three stars, and I'm planning to knock the second one out soon because it it wasn't all that bad. I just think some of the things wrong with it were really funny. <laughs> uh, it does a pretty accurate job of navigating a small southern town social scene, which I know from experience. And I think Kirby is being set up to reconnect with his inner dork for the rest of the series, even if that is just three more books. Uh, the mystery was also decently plotted, even if I would have preferred maybe some clueier clues and less time talking to his cop, not girlfriend. I I still really think killing Ryan off was a bad choice, but they can't exactly walk that one back now, so I'll let it slide. <laughs> I also liked that Kirby's still really close to his grandmother, and he tries pretty hard to take care of her, so that was nice. I liked that. Anyways, if you've read this, uh, let me know what you think, uh, or if you know of any more, like, nerdy, cozy mysteries. I'm kind of hunting those down now. Since I read Legends and Lattes, I just, I want more of that. But anyways, uh, take care, stay cozy, and happy reading. Bye.